Hi guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com and in this week's ukulele lesson, we're gonna be learning a little strumming etude that I wrote which uses open chords. So the big question is, what is an open chord? Well, in its simplest definition, it means any chord that includes at least one open string. So that means all of these stock basic chords that we know, like C, G, F, A minor, those are all open chords. Now that leaves us feeling a little disappointed in the definition. And that's kind of the key thing with open chords. The key point is not the definition, but how you apply it into your playing. So if you want to create a little bit of magic, here's the two things that I think about when I want to use open chords to create magic. Number one, I like to use them to break away from playing only in the beginning of the neck. And number two, I like to use the open strings to add color to chords. So we can see that those, both of those points being clear, clearly used in the A melody of this tune. If we think of this A melody, the chord progression is literally one, two, three, four, five out of the key of A. So that means that we're playing A to B minor, to C sharp minor, to D major, to E major, and then back to A. Now that sounds nice, but it sounds very boring, very vanilla. So what if we substitute the first and the second string for open notes, right? And if we do that, then we end up with this chord progression, or this sound, that's, that's the same chord progression, but this sound to the chord progression. which is way more interesting, much more color, much prettier sounding chords. And that's my approach for using open chords. So uh, it, it's a really, really unique way to add color and to break away from playing only in the beginning of the neck. So let's talk a little bit now about this lesson. So in this video, you guys are gonna learn the entire song, so both A melody and B melody. And if you want to get the tabs to print out and follow along with, you can do so by clicking this link right here or going to the site rockclass101.com and do a search for the song name. I haven't figured out the name yet, but through the magic of video editing, it'll be right there. Now, also on that page is going to be the on-screen tab viewer. So this is a really cool feature where you can hit play, you can watch the tab scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you wish. It's just a great asset for learning this song that much easier. All right, so now that we know what open chords is, and by the way, sometimes you may hear it referred to as open voicings or open voice chords. It all means the same thing, just different terminology. But let's go ahead and jump into learning this tune. And the first thing that we need to talk about is what the right hand is doing. So you probably noticed that I used my thumb to play the entire song. So that's the first point that we want to get across. We're only going to be using the thumb, except for one measure, and we'll talk about that when we get there. But the second thing is, uh, the, the attack for the thumb, it really comes down to doing one of three things. So to explain this, let's look at the first measure right here. First thing you're gonna notice is that you see some chords, and then you see some single notes. So you either have a chord hit or a single note hit, okay? And you may be wondering, if we're playing a strumming song, why aren't we just strumming everything, right? That's kind of a logical question. Well, if I play this tune, just strumming everything, it sounds like this. Okay, so it sounds really nice. The chords sound beautiful. But again, it's kind of that same vanilla sound that we talked about with uh, playing basic chords, right? When you use the same strumming attack for the entire song, everything sounds the same, and it's just kind of a little bit boring. So if we sprinkle in some single notes here and there, we can create a little bit more texture in our playing. And that sounds a little bit like this. So you hear every now and 
then you hear just a different attack, a different hit. It's kind of like adding sprinkles to ice cream, right? To vanilla ice cream. Vanilla ice cream is great, but you put a little bit of sprinkles in it, it just adds a little pop, a little zest. So that's why I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to play this with the single notes mixed in. So looking at this tab, anytime you see a chord, you're going to do a strum down with the thumb. Anytime you see a single note on string four, string three, or string two, you're going to pluck the note downwards with the thumb, just as if you were using your thumb to play any kind of single note. A C major scale. The same approach, just a down pluck. Now anytime you see a single note on the A string, you're going to use an upward motion. And this upward motion is going to be as if you were doing a strum, but you only want to hit string one. So when I do this upward motion, I'm hitting on the side, the flesh part of my thumb, right there, just the side. It's okay if your nail hits the string. You may actually want your nail to hit the string because the nail makes the note pop more. It has more oomph than the flesh part hitting it. So it's up to you. You can uh, do either or, either or works. But the big thing is, anytime you see a single note on the A string, upward motion, Okay, now the second thing that I'm doing with my right hand is I'm taking these two fingers and I'm placing them on the body. So basically straight down the middle of the, uh, the hole right there. I'm just placing it there and I'm using it as kind of like an anchor, a little bit of a leverage point. And that just kind of keeps my right hand thumb uh, kind of stuck over these four strings like that. So as I play through this tune, that's what I'm doing. You can be floating if you like, that's fine as well. But for me, I think that's really a comfortable way to play it. And that's basically it. So again, just to recap the three hits, anytime you see a chord, you're going to strum it down. Anytime you see a single note on string four, three, or two, you're going to do a downward pluck with the thumb. Anytime you see a single note on string one, the A string, upward but in the motion of a strum. Okay, so that's all you need to know for this tune. So let's jump into learning it. So the first measure of the A melody sounds and looks like this. Okay, so I lied, I played half of it. And that's actually a good uh, starting point for us. If we look at just the first half, we have strum four, strum, strum one. And that's really it, that's all you have to memorize, strum, four, strum, strum one, okay? So let's see if we can make this chord together and then we'll try that little strum pattern. So this chord is going to be the ring finger on the ninth fret of string four and your pinky on the ninth fret of string three. Remember, the A and the E strings are open throughout this entire A melody. So we're going to strum down, then hit string four, then we're gonna strum down again, and one more time and then hit the A string. So we have strum, four, strum, strum, one. Okay, you can also think of it as the rhythmic value. One and two and uh. All right, so let's try this one together. So here we go, three and four and. Nice. Now, as we go into our next chord, I want you to think of it as shape number one. Okay, so here we go. We're going into the E chord. So I want you to lift the pinky finger up. Keep the ring finger where it's at. Put your middle finger on the eighth fret of string three. So look at this shape. And this is a shape that you know because it's the same as the stock A major. Okay, but the fingers are a half step apart. So memorize this shape. So we have nine on string four, eight on string three. Of course, the other two strings open. Now we're going to do the same right hand approach for this E chord, right? But again, memorize the shape. This is shape number one. So we're going to go strum, four, strum, strum, one. So everything's the same for the right hand. So let's try that together. One, two. Cool. So if we backtrack, let's try this entire first measure. So all we have to do is lift the middle, put the pinky back down. We have the A chord, and here we go. Three, four, strum, four, strum, 
strum one, strum four, strum, strum one. Right, and it's just that simple. So this is shape number one. I want you to move this shape down a whole step. So you're going from nine and eight to seven and six. So still the exact same shape, right? But now in this position, we're playing a D. Okay, our right hand is going to do the same exact motion. So let's see if we can try that together. Three and four and... Nice. Now, going into the second half of this second measure, lift the middle finger up, take this ring finger, move it down a half step to the sixth fret, put your index down on the fourth fret of string three. Look at this shape. This is shape number two. There is a fret in between the fingers, right? So the fingers are a whole step apart. So memorize this shape. This is shape number two. Now our right hand, as you guessed, does the same exact thing. So strum four, strum, strum one. Okay, so let's try that together. One, two. Nice. So if we backtrack, let's try measure number two. Remember, measure number two starts with shape one and then goes into shape two. So you have seven, six, goes into six, four. Okay, so seven, six, Lift the middle finger up, go down a half step, put the index down, six, four. So hit pause, get that muscle memory down of those chords down, and then let's try it together. Here we go, three, four. Nice. So if we backtrack again, and we start at measure one, and we go into measure two, we're thinking of this first chord, which is not included in our shapes, just unique in and of itself, but it's this A chord. Then it goes into shape number one. It goes down a whole step, shape number one still. Down a half step with the ring, shape number two. Okay, so you may wanna just hit pause and press practice the chord transitions. One, two, three, four. Just practice that. You can always put it in a time frame, like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. But remember, shape one, shape two. That's all we're doing except for the first one. So let's see if we can try that together. Measure one and two, three, four. Now going into measure three, take shape number two, move it down a whole step. So you're on six, four, you're going to four, two. This takes us to our B minor, okay? Now, the first half of this measure is the same right hand. So you have, right, everything identical. Strum, four, strum, strum one. Now you can see that that last hit, that A string, that's going to last into beat three. So you want to hold it a little bit longer. And then you're going to do another A followed by string four. So think of this as the first three fourths of this measure. You have strum four, strum, strum one, one four. Right, but you can hear that linger. Strum four, strum, strum one, one four. Right, you can hear that one single note on the A string linger a little bit longer. So let's see if we can try that together. Ready, go. Strum, four, strum, strum, one, one, four. One more time. Ready, go. Strum, four, strum, strum, one, one, four. Nice. Now to finish it up, we have down, down, up. So strum, strum, one. So we're gonna add that at the end. So if we try the entire measure, three, four. That's what we end up with. Let's try again. Three, four, strum, four, strum, strum, one, one, four, strum, strum, one. Nice. So just get that memorized. Ba, 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 da, 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 da. 
right? So if you get that memorized, you'll be rocking and rolling. It's a very catchy rhythm to sing. So going into measure number four, this is where we have a cool little walk down on the chords that we've already learned. So we're gonna backtrack to seven, six. That was the D chord using shape one. That's gonna be the first hit. Then you're going to six, four, just like the song did. That's the second hit. Then you're going to four, two. That's the third hit. And here we're going into A major. And you can see that we have shape one, shape two, shape two, and then shape one. But to play the A, instead of using these fingers, let's just use the ones that we've done a million times before for the A chord. So second and first finger, but still the same shape, right? So you have shape one, shape two, shape two, shape one. Okay? So that's gonna be one and two and, right? All down strums, eighth note rhythm. So let's try together. Three and four and one and two and. Now you can hear and see that this end of beat two is gonna last into beat three. So we're holding it longer. Then we're gonna follow it up with playing string four and then down, down, up. Oops, if I don't miss the last one. So putting it into the context makes more sense than to start from the end of the measure. So we have one and two and three and four and a. Uh. So strum, 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 A, four, A, A, A. Okay, so let's see if we can try that one together. So really so, three, four, one and two and and four and uh. So if I call it the strum hits, I have strum, 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 four, strum, strum, one. But don't forget to hold into beat three. So we have one and two and three and four and uh. So one more time, you and I, three, four, one and two and three and four and uh okay if we backtrack let's try three into four here we go three four okay so the hardest part here is really just going to be some of the transitions. Like if you look at the end of measure three. We have to go boom, quite a big jump, right? And that kind of leads us to an interesting point. Anytime where you're jumping up and down the neck, it's really good to use the dots as our guiding stepping stones or whatever you want to call it. But on my ukulele, and not every ukulele is uh, uniform, my first dot is the third fret. Some ukuleles, the first dot is the fifth fret. So take a look at what you've got. And you want to remember that dots are on the top of the neck as well. So they're not just on the fretboard. So you don't have to pivot the uke like that to see them. So keep your eye on the top. Now, if I know my first dot is three, my second dot is five, my third dot is seven, fourth dot is 10, double dot is 12. If I know my dots and I, as they correlate to the frets, then as I'm playing this kind of stuff and I have a jump from four two to seven six, I can just keep my eye on that third dot. So when I move my hand up, I'm not watching my hand go up like that. Instead, I'm keeping my eye on the prize, which is that third dot and I'm moving up until my finger, third finger, hits the third dot, okay? So it's kind of like a, a way to, you know, I don't wanna call it cheat, you, you take an advantage of the way the instrument is laid out. So use that visual uh, guide as a reference point anytime you have a big jump, okay? And you can also see that all of these chords, they all lead with the, um, the ring finger, right? So you can see that ring finger stays planted up until the end when the index finger is the one that stays planted. So that's another thing you want to keep in mind to make the chord transitions a little bit easier. So ring finger leads us, right? So it stays anchored, just moves down, and then index finger leads us for the last one, B minor to A. Okay? So 
now that we've done uh, three and four, we've talked about a few little tricks for it. Uh, let's try one through four. So here we go. Three, four. So it sounds pretty, pretty beautiful, pretty cool so far. Now, here's the thing, that's going to get repeated two times. So you're just gonna play those four measures again, and that will give you the entirety of the A melody. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the B melody. Now the B melody is interesting because it starts out with some of these basic chords. Remember, they're still open voiced. Right? as long as one string is open. But even though it's based out of this, we have some cool movement that's gonna be happening. And it leads us into the latter half of the B melody with playing some really, really cool stuff that's a little bit higher up the neck. So I think the B melody has a really interesting, uh, kind of a contrasting feel to the A melody. The A melody was this beautiful chord progression. The B melody kind of has a little bit of tension. It's a little bit of a different feel. It's a nice complement to the A melody. So let me do this. Let me play a little bit of uh, the first part of this and then we'll break it down and learn it. So it sounds a little bit like this. So a really cool contrasting sound from the A melody. So go ahead and make the basic E7 and let's kick into measure number five. So the stock E7. Now if you look at the first half of this tab, it's the same right hand as the A melody. So strum four, strum, strum one. So that's identical. So all we want to do is we want to add what's happening during beat three to the mix. So what you want to memorize is this. You want to think of it as strum, four, strum, strum, one, four, one, four. Okay, so you have strum, four, strum, strum, one, four, one, four. So get that in your head. Ba, 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 da, 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 da. So strum, four, strum, strum, one, four, one, four. Memorize that rhythm. It's going to make it so much easier to play. So strum, four, strum, strum, one, four, one, four. Okay, if I don't count it, you can still hear that rhythm. Ba, 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 ba. So memorize that and let's try it together. Three, four. Nice. Now, here's what happens to finish it up lift the index finger up, and we're going to move this shape to two. We're going to move it up a whole step to four, four. So strum from three down, E string is still open, and then go back to where you were. Okay, so you have strum, strum, so that's beat four, end. So if we tie it together, we have. Okay, so strum, four, strum, strum, one, four, one, four, strum, strum. Let's try together. Ready, go. Strum four, strum, strum one four, one four, strum, strum. Nice. Now, as we go into measure number six, we're kicking to the stock A major. And it's almost identical to measure number five. So let's break down what the difference is. If you look at the first three fourths, so beat one, two, and three, it's the same right hand as we did for the E7. So strum, four, strum, strum, one, four, one, four. It's identical. So the only thing that changes is what's happening on beat four. You have strum, strum, one. So down, down, up, and that's four, and da. Uh. So if you tie in that entire measure, you have strum, four, strum, strum, one, four, one, four, strum, strum, one. And it's really that simple. Let's see if we can try together. Three, four. Okay, 
Okay, so very, very slight minor variation at the end. So let's do this. Let's try E7 into A, so 5 into measure 6. So here we go. 3, 4... Now, here's what happens. You're going to repeat measure five again. So you're gonna play E7. Everything identical. Then you're going to go into ending number two, which is measure number seven. And that sounds like this. Okay, so if you look at the first half, identical right hand again. So we have strum four, strum, strum one. Okay, so look at the second half. The first thing you're going to notice is that it's all eighth note hits. So you have three and four end, and it just has a walk up movement. So we're starting with strumming the A chord, then we're going back to two, open two. So strum three down, go and move that up a whole step to four, open four, strum three down, and then keep these two fingers planted. So key, don't lift the ring finger up. Put the pinky down on five on string one. Strum three down. So you have one, two, three, four hits. It's that simple. So hit pause in the video, get that uh, chord movement and muscle memory down, and let's see if we can try this entire seventh measure together. So here we go, three, four. So I wanted you to leave these two fingers down because if you look at the eighth measure, you're going to lift the pinky up, and you're going to move this shape up to the seventh fret. And that's going to be our first chord hit for this eighth measure. Okay? So that's why I wanted you to keep that planted. It's going to make the transition into the eighth measure super easy. But before we get into this eighth measure, let's do this. Let's try those four bars so five, six, five, seven. Let's try those together. So here we go. One, two, ready, go. As we go into this last section for the B melody, we're going to be kicking off where we just discussed, where we left off. So seven, seven, string three, and string one. So this time around, we're gonna hit from four down. So we have open G and an open E. It's gonna sound like this. And what do you notice? The right hand is the same. So strum, four, strum, strum one. Okay? So if we go into our second chord for this measure, lift the ring finger up, we don't need it, move the middle finger down to six, and then put the index down on five on string one. Here's the kicker, strum three down, but the right hand remains the same. So you have strum, third string with the thumb, strum, strum one. Okay, so strum, three, strum, strum one. So same thing, except instead of hitting the fourth string, we're hitting the third string, right? So backtrack, we have E minor to this D. One and two and a three and four and a... Let's see if we can try that together. Three, four. Pretty simple, right? Now, here's the thing, as we go into the next measure, so this is measure nine, it looks kind of complicated, but it's really simple. Okay, so don't let it scare you. It's gonna sound like this. Okay, so it looks like a lot's happening because it's all 16th notes for the first three beats. But here's what's happening. So remember we talked about 202 and 404. That's what we're playing out of for this. So start on 202, right? Middle and ring finger. You're gonna strum the chord and then do a pull off with the ring to the open A. So strum, pull off the open A, strum the chord again. This is still up 
and then hit the A string with the thumb going up motion. So the right hand still applies the rules that we set in stone before. Okay, so I have strum, pull off, strum, upward, open A. One E and uh, So we want to keep all the hits even. One E and uh, So ba da 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 ba ba. So that's what that measure sounds like. So nice and even. Okay, so strum, pull off, strum, one. Now move up to four, zero, four. Do the same thing. Strum, pull off, strum, open A. Then move back down to two, zero, two. Same thing. Strum, pull off, strum, open A. So hit pause there. That gives you beat one, two, and three. Just practice that. When you get comfortable with that, you're going to add the last part. And the last part is something we've already done. Go back to 404, strum that, add the pinky down to 5, strum that. 4 and. So you have. Okay? But let's try it slow. So here we go 3, 4. Okay? So I think that explanation really simplified it. It looks really scary, but it's not super hard to play. Now, here's the thing. That's going to be ending number one. So you're, you're literally going to backtrack. You're going to play eight again, and then you're going to go into ending two. But before we get there, let's do this. Let's try eight into nine. So it sounds like this. So let's give it a shot. So we have three, four. Okay, now it's gonna go back into the eighth measure. And then it's gonna go into ending number two, which is our 10th measure. Sounds like this. And you can see that my right hand is going to deviate from what we set in stone. Now, it doesn't have to, but I think it's easier to utilize the index finger for part of this measure. So go back to 202. This time around, we're going to add the open G. In essence, this becomes a G chord. So we're going to strum all four. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that index finger and I'm going to lift the ring finger up here, the left hand. And we'll play the open A. So I have strum with it down. So open two, zero, two, strum, lift the ring finger up, pluck the open A with the index of the right hand. Then take the pinky, put it on the third fret of string two. I'm gonna use my thumb for a down stroke. And then I'm going to lift the pinky up, put my ring finger down on the second fret of string two. And I'm gonna strum four to two. So I have open second, second for a D chord. So together, and let me see if I can do it without hitting the body. There we go. So I have strum, O, three, strum. And you can see that's gonna last into beat three. And then again, I'm gonna use my index to play the open E. And then I have a quick hammer on. So first to second on string three, and then back to the open E. Now, putting it into context makes a little bit more sense. Very catchy. Ba -da 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 -ba -da -da. So memorize that rhythm. So you have one and two and three and four and. Okay, so let's see if we can try that one together. Three, four, strum, oh, three, strum, one, four and. Cool, so let's try this then. Let's see if we can try that second half of the B melody. So starting from E minor, here we go. Three, four. I flubbed that third fret 
of the second string, that little. And that brings up a really good point. When you get the piece to being performance ready, if you make a mistake, play through the mistake. Don't stop and start from that spot. That's how people know you mess up. They're not gonna notice a little uh, buzzy note or a missed note here and there. So play through any mistake when you get it to the performance ready. So let me do this for you guys. I'm gonna play through all of the B melody, just to give you a context of everything put together. So it sounds like this. And that transition leads us so tastefully back into that A melody. So it's a beautiful uh, segue back into the main melody. And it has such a cool contrasting sound. You know, that B melody has a lot more tension. And at the end, it really releases that, takes us back into the sweet, harmoni harmonious, is that the word, I think, of the A melody. Just a beautiful sound. So that's it guys, that's the entire tune. Um, when you go back into the A melody, the only difference is uh, you play it two times through, just like uh, we highlighted in the beginning. But the only difference is that the second time through, you can add a little bit of a retardando. So as you cycle through the last time, the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth measure, you have... About here, B minor. start the retardando on B minor, and you can see that you end on that A chord, so the end of uh, beat two. So the ending of it. One and two and three, four. And just let it sustain until it fades out. But that's it. That's the entire tune, guys. So a lot of fun. This song introduced us to open chords, but not just open chords in its strict definition, but a really unique way to utilize them in our playing to create color. And it also broke us away from playing in the beginning of the neck, and it also introduced us to doing a strumming tune that integrated single notes. So again, the analogy was putting sprinkles on ice cream. So instead of the same attack for everything, down, up, down, up, if we do a strum followed by a single note here and there, we again get more texture in our playing. So a pretty cool song with quite a few big takeaways from it. So guys, I do wanna remind you, if you want to get the tabs to print out, keep for your records, you can do so by clicking this link or go into the site, rockclass101.com. You can do a search for the song. Song name will be there once I figure it out. <laughs> But uh, also on that page will be the on-screen interactive tab player. So it's that really cool interactive tab player where you hit play, watch that tab scroll across in real time, highlight bars, loop sections, slow down, all that fun jazz. A great tool for getting a song like this down so much easier. All right, guys. So again, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.